My name is Tyler Pilger. I'm a fisheries biologist at FishBio. I was involved in a number of aspects of this study, from collection to analysis of the data and seeing it through the peer review process. In general, salmon are in decline throughout California. And without human intervention, such as trucking salmon to the bay or ocean, many salmon can't survive their migration to the ocean. One way that salmon die is by being eaten by a bigger fish. That's why we wanted to look at what fish are eating juvenile salmon. We used boat electrofishing to briefly stun the fish. That way we could net them and put them into tanks of water on our boats. We targeted striped bass, largemouth and smallmouth bass, Sacramento pike minnow, among other species known to eat fish. To see what they were recently eating, we essentially pumped their stomachs and preserved their gut contents for later identification. We also collected some additional data on them, implanted pit tags for possible recapture, and released them back into the water. So striped bass, largemouth, and smallmouth bass are not native to California. Other studies that have looked at their diets in the Sacramento and San Joaquin Delta have found they eat a lot of non-native fish. However, in tributaries such as the Stanislaus River, native fishes are more common. And this is especially true in the spring when juvenile salmon can be very abundant. This explains the reason we saw more native fish in the diets of predators compared to other studies done in the Delta. Admittedly, we were really focused on trying to find juvenile Chinook salmon in the diets of predators. However, we found a lot of juvenile Pacific lamprey in the diets of both native and non-native predators that we looked at in this study. Native fish populations already face a number of challenges, including land use changes in the watershed and displacement by non-native species. Predation is just another threat to native fish populations, and it needs to be quantified. Historically, juvenile salmon were eaten by native predators, such as Sacramento pike minnow. However, with the introduction of non-native predators, there are now more predator species and fewer numbers of juvenile salmon. That means there's more hungry fish and fewer prey. Even though our study took place on the Stanislaus River, when you compare our results to those of other studies performed throughout the Central Valley, you get the full picture of where more native fish are being eaten in the tributaries compared to where more non-native fish are being eaten in the delta. An important part of our study was that we collected data across three different juvenile salmon migration seasons. One year had a lot of water and therefore high spring flows. Two years had very little water, thus low spring flows. We saw that predators consume salmon and native fishes at similar frequencies in all years. This indicates to us that non-native predators are detrimental to native fish populations at different environmental conditions, including years with high flows. Based on lamprey catch data throughout the Central Valley, we know that the Stanislaus River has a large population of Pacific lamprey. Therefore, it's no surprise that we found them in the diets of non-native predators. However, unlike salmon, we know very little about how many adult lamprey migrate upstream or how many juvenile lamprey migrate out to the ocean in any given year. In the future, we may have to consider monitoring programs for Pacific lamprey. Our study shows that salmon face intense predation pressure very early in their migration. Seeing what predators eat is the first piece of the puzzle. The next step is to understand more about the abundance of different predator species, also when and where they occur in the Stanislaus River.